So we're learning the Maim and Nasana Aliyas Irktana. And we'll go right to the text. Uh, we had a Fabrengi yesterday, and I thought it was very good, and people are watching it online. So, anyway, um, we are on page. Um, we're on page. Hold on. We're on page 132. Uh, the bottom of the page. We're on page, yeah, 132, the second to last line is what I have. Good. Amnam. Amnam. Liyais hanefesh abamis ikore midois. However, since the nefesh abamis, what's its primary function? It's midos, it's emotions. And its entire desire is It is to attain physical material matter. And it is immersed in getting that Gashmius. And he says in Yiddish, And is in them Fartrumkin. The word Fartrumkin means sunk. You know, like we say in Oz Yoshir every morning, Tubu Bayamsuf. The Egyptians, they drowned in the Yamsuf. What's the word? Tubu. What's the Shaydish? The Shaydish of the word is associated with immersion. Immersion. In Yiddish, the word is Far Trunkin. Now, don't, don't make the mistake in thinking that there's another Yiddish word to, to drink. To drink is to trinkin, trinkin. That's trinkin. This is trunkin. And the difference is, one means to drink, and one means immersed. What the Rebbe is saying here is, that the nefesh abamis immerses the person emotionally to get gashmis. That's the entire objective of this nefesh abamis. Bederech Shitus, top of 133. And it says, and it does this in a very simple, straightforward way. In other words, it says, you see something good, it smells good, it looks good, it tastes good, go get it. Don't, 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 don't philosophize, and don't look for explanations, just, if it, if it talks to your five senses, go for it. And the Rebbe says another point to you, and it does this over the Gios Gedola with great habit. The ha- habit, the habitual approach, is very much in line with one of the mechanisms, Avi, that the Nefesh Abamis uses. Shurugal Bazet. He's accustomed. You know, like yesterday, today, like today, like tomorrow. That's the way it is. You know, to break a habit, wow, is that hard. Where did these habits come from? The Nefesh Abamis. In other words, the Nefesh Abamis is very comfortable in the habit world. It fits its modus operandi. And because of this, it is ochus. Ochus means gechapt in Yiddish. What does it mean in English? It is caught. Ochus basvach. Captured the kosher and it is bound, it is so bound. Beholding Yonayolam with all matters of, of world worldly matters. This hops it, this captures it, this talks to it. In the Mazais, therefore, in order to begin healthy therapy, to get away from this. Feeling the psuki de zimra, the concept of verses of praise, which we which we say every morning, who lezamer aritzim is to cut, lezamer means to cut aritzim branches, thorns, branches. Right, you want to go to a garden, you want to smell the nice roses, you don't want to have thorns get in your bones. What do you have to do? 
You have to first cut away the ugly, sticky, pointy branches. So what's the word psuke de zimra, verses of praise? Being that Chazal used the word zimra, which means song, lezamer to sing, it's also associated with the word lezamer aritzim, to cut away those branches, okay? So what are we doing in Psuki de Zimra vis-a-vis glorifying God through creation, the heavens and the earth and the mountains and the rivers and everything else? Magoblu Masecha, Marabu Masecha, all of those awesome verses that we read in Psuki de Zimra, what we're doing is we're cutting down the Nefesh Abamis. We're chopping it. We're taking it apart. You'll not, you notice what he says here, Hillel. To separate the bad from the Nefesh Abamis. What does that tell you, Hillel? The Nefesh Abamis itself is not bad. And this goes back to the point that we've made over and over, and we can't emphasize it enough, that the Nefesh Abamis does not equal Yetzer Hara. Yetzer Hara is in the inclination of evil. That is bad. Nefesh Abamis is the drive that, that tends to motivate the Yetzer Hara. But this drive, in its very core essence, is pure. The format that it takes when it comes into the world that we are in is a bad one. Because it, 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 it follows habits and, 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 and what the world brings with it just by being here without avoida, without thinking and working and all that. That's why the Rebbe says, Hayinu Lahafrid. The first idea of Sukkot Zimri is to chop down, to chop away the bed from the Nefesh Abamis. Passion as Avram used the word before we began learning, passion is, 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 is important. The question is, what do you use that passion for? We don't want to get rid of passion. Say to someone, because you were passionate about eating a cheeseburger, get rid of your passion. No. Keep your passion and stop eating the cheeseburger. Because you were passionate about uh, music, but the music you were doing wasn't the holiest music. Cut away the, the practicality of what type of music it was, which wasn't the healthiest type of music for your soul, and keep the passion for music and put it into Jewish music. Beautiful words. The previous Rebbe, when he describes something, he, he's such a master writer. And the, to to take out, to, to, to exit, to make the nefesh abamis exit, meharefesh vitit, from the schmutz and the cement. It's been stuck and sunk, and it got so stuck into the schmutz, you have to take it out. For example, galmi eats. You have. A, a, a bare piece of wood, a, a, a piece of wood, Abi, that's not formed. It's just a, it's a piece of wood. You, you want to make a cup out of it, a table, a chair. This piece of wood, the word galmi is associated with the word golem. You've heard of the golem, right? What does the golem mean? Plain, unfor- not formed. Hagalmi Kamoshahu, the way this piece of wood it is in its original state, without any form, Yefsher Lasis with Menu Kli. You can't make a Kli out of it. You know why? It has um it's 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 not it's not smooth, it has rough edges. What's the first thing you have to do? Well, this is on page 133. Fifth line, uvirdei lahachshira, and in order to prepare this piece of wood to be to, to, suitable to make of it a, a, a vessel, 
to make a vessel the first thing you have to do is engrave it from the outside meaning you have to take this piece of wood sand it down make it smooth make it workable make it be that it is now ready to be made into whatever particular vessel you want the Ahakach, after you do what's called Hakika mi bachutz, engraving from the outside, it is now re- afterwards you could do Chokakim Oisei Bibifnim, we engrave it from the inside, la Seisei Kibu, to make it a vessel. We, we carve out the inside and we form it like a, a cup if we want a cup. If we want a table, we form it another way. In other words, all of that comes only after. You do what's called Hakika mi bachutz. And Hakika bachutz would be in the, in, the, in, the, in the example that we're using, sanding it down and making it smooth so that is now usable. Before that, forget about, forget about what type of item will you make from this piece of wood. You can't even use it. Because as soon as you go next to it, it, it you, you get a splinter. This is the end of the mushal. Now comes the nimshal, the moral. The Torah says, man is like a, like a tree in the field. Quoting the Hal- Tehillim, which is saying the Halalukas, through the activity called exalting God, in their throats. How do you, how do you have rum exalt God in your throat? By using your throat to sing to God, to pray to God. The exaltation of God. Begreinam is in the throat. And the Rebbe says how? Behilulim vishishbachos. With lauding and praising. Where? The psuki de zimra. That we say in the verses of praise. Bechayis with energy, the hispilus and emotionalism. Let me make it clear that it doesn't mean you have to scream at the top of your lungs and you have to shake and bake until you fall down and crash. But we mean that you are so excited in your davening, in lauding Hashem, that He makes the sun and the moon and the rivers and everything else, all the halalukas, that you are a Burning fire, as you say those verses. So the, let, let's now, so let's explain this mushal in the nimshal a little better. In other words, we have a problem here. We have a nefesh abamis. We have a, and the nefesh abamis has great energy. The question is, what are you going to do about it? This great energy is messed up. Right now it's messed up. Comes along, Chassidus, and explains, don't throw the baby out with the, with the water, the bath water. It's two separate things. The water is schmutzig, it's schmutz, get rid of that. Zamir. The first thing you got to do is you got to separate the two. You have to have the clarity that there's a difference between Yetzirah and Nefesh Abamis. Yetzirah, get away from me. I don't want to talk to you, get out of my life. But I have passions. I have desires. Some of them very unhealthy. Okay, we're going to tr- work on transforming them and finding methods in which I'll appreciate using my passion for Hashem. So we start the evening and we say, Hallelujah, Baruch Shamar. Right? And all of this says, Wow, you know, my excitement can be expressed through art. My excitement can be expressed through speaking. My excitement can be expressed through my hands. Every one of us has another way to utilize their excitement, their nefesh abamis, their passion. So the first thing is to realize and come to a place where we get rid, we cut down the, the thorns and the ugly branches, 
and that and that's called in the language of the Maimer Hakika Mibachutz, engraving the piece of wood, get you know smoothing it out and sanding it down, and then begins the avoid of Hakika Mibach Pnim. Deciding, I want to make a table out of it, a chair out of it, this out of it, and depending on what the item that I want, that's the application that I use. And the Rebbe says, when we speak, when we, and this is the meaning, the exaltedness of God is in the throat. How? When we use our throat, our mouth, our gutturals to praise God and Lord Hashem with energy and emotionalism, we are actually capitalizing on the Nefesh Abamis. And the Nefesh Abamis is being, is happy that its power, which is passion, is being used for Hashem. Because as I told you, the Nefesh Abamis is a messenger of God. Its purpose is to bring out the best in man, although outwardly it looks like its purpose to bring out the worst in man, just the opposite. Why must you say that, Hillel? Because it would be an oxymoron, a contradiction, to say God gives us something in our DNA that's there to hurt us, or put put other way, put put it put it another way. God puts something that's against God. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's, it's analogous to can God create a rock that he himself can't pick up? If he's the creator, of course he can pick up the rock, the stone. So what do you mean he can't pick up the stone? He created the stone. God created the Nefesh Abamis. So you're telling me that he created something that just smack him in the face? That's not called God. You know what that's called? Mishigas. That's called stupidity. We have to learn and understand the difference between stupidity and godliness. And what is godliness? Godliness includes creating something that has the outward appearance. And not only outward appearance, has the outward mechanism of lulling you into a place of stupidity, but the purpose is you should overcome it and come out better. Last night I was at a wedding. At this wedding, I met one of the uh, parents of the Chassel Nakala, and I see it's a Chabad wedding. And I saw by the chuppah, he wasn't wearing a long black coat, a kapata, like most of the Lubavitchers. Okay. Full beard. And then I see he's not wearing a gartel under the chuppah of his own child. So it, it, it took me for a surprise, because usually a chabadik, you know, has a kapata, if not a kapata, at least a gartel. So when we came to the Sudha, I went over to him and said, Mazel Tov, and started to talk to him. I said, I'm just curious. Um, I, I noticed that you didn't, you know, have a kapot and a gartel, and, and I see all your beautiful children, ten boys. He has ten boys. And each and every one of them, you know, had a tie and a hat. It looked very, uh, very, very, you know, c- connected to, in this case, Chabad. So I said, is there a, why didn't you, like, why don't you wear a gartel? He said, I'll tell you. And he, he, he was ready for the question, because I'm sure he's been asked. He was so ready for it. And he, and he started to engage me in conversation. And, and he said, without, I mean, you know, he didn't tell me certain details that I know about him, because I'm close to one of the, the other Bechutten. So without divulging too much, he, he said to me, I did not want my children to feel compelled to choose a path because of me. I want that they should choose their own path. If they want to be Chabad, Chabad, Litvak, Litvak, not religious, not religious, he didn't say all this, but this is what he... And therefore, 
I decided to become religious. What well, one second, Hillel? Become religious, but kind of, you know, not to. I felt that if I become fully Lubavitch in the sense of the outward, you know, garb and all that, I am kind of forcing my kids to follow in this path, and I don't believe that's what should be done. I, right or wrong, it just reminds me what we're learning here about the Nefesh Abamis. The Nefesh Abamis is a real player, a real sharp player. The Nefesh Abamis plays with us, day in, day out. There isn't a moment when we're awake, and I would even say when we're asleep, that this Nefesh Abamis doesn't, in Yiddish there's a word, I want you to remember this word, guys, Chepe, Chepe, I can spell it T-Z-E-P-A probably, Chepe, or Chepin, Chepin, it means to bother. There isn't a day that this Nefesh Abamis doesn't chepe us, doesn't bother us. And, and that's why Hasidim, who were, you know, ahead of the game, smart, they never trusted themselves. Anyone that trusts themselves is a fool, as the Gemara says already. The Nefesh Abamis can come to a person and in a moment, take them somewhere where they would never, if they were rational and normal and thinking, they wouldn't go there. But the Nefesh Abamis gets to them that moment. That's what type of player this Nefesh Abamis is. So that's what the Rebbe says here in the mind. But the first thing to do is you have to make it very clear. Listen, Nefesh Abamis. You are not a bad guy in your very essence. And therefore, I like you, and I want you, but you got to play along with me. Me meaning the Nefesh kiss, And we're going to have a discussion and see how we can work out this relationship. This discussion begins in Psuki de Zimra. When we talk about the, the, the heavens, and the mountains, and the sea, and we're pointing to all these things, we're saying to the Nefesh Abamis, you Nefesh Abamis, you like to go on a vacation. You like to go to a beautiful river. You like to go to nature. You like all this. So who created nature, Nefesh Abamis? God created nature. So let's find God in nature. And these are the type of discussions that we have with the Nefesh Abamis as we dive in Shachris. Hillel, you wanted to say something. Yeah, two things. Um, one thing, uh, that point about the Nefesh Abamis, uh Seems to me, in that way, to emphasize that point that you're you're making, the nefesh of Bahamas is a much more useful word than than the yetsar hara, because it's pretty hard to 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 the way you turn the you use the term hara. It's pretty hard not to think of it as a bad guy. And and it, and, I, and I said it is yetsar hara is bad, then you have to get rid of it. Yes. So the answer is. And, uh, Absolutely, but but again, yeah. Hasidus, but the, those Kabbalah. terms it seems to me are are, are often used interchangeably, and um, the nefesh of Hamas is much more precise and useful in that way. Is the point I wanted to make? Yes, yes, but 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 again, Hilo, you're right. Many most times they're used interchangeably, but when you learn Chabad Hasidus, you understand that they're they're so distant from each other. Mm-hmm. In its very core, this is evil and bad. This is good. Passion is good. What you use your passion for is no good. Go ahead. Next point. Yeah, I also I wanted to share with you when you're talking about the uh, the the uh, the chasana, the father, uh, my rabbi in Baltimore, Rabbi Goberger, when he met his rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo Tversky, for the first time, he. Uh, he um, and he was in his home. He 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 noticed that there was a picture of him with long payas, uh, which was not the uh, which was not the um, practice of his father. His father had short payas, so he he asked him, you know, what do you? Uh, uh, what, how come you have long payas? And, uh, and you know that wasn't the practice in your family. 
He said, Rabbi Tversky answered him by saying, I rebelled. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just for another moment, this, this idea of, it, it's a delicate issue. You know, what we do, do we have an expectation of our children, our friends, to follow? Do we not have an expectation? So the answer is to have expectations is, is, is absurd. Only have expectations of yourself, not of someone else. But nevertheless, nevertheless, if, if I believe wearing a, a beard and not touching the beard, I believe it's to be holy, right? So because I wear a beard like this, I'm imposing it on my kids? No. I'm not. I don't, I don't, I don't trim my mustache. That's, that's the way I decided. Although, because there's a letter to the Rebbe, where a chassid asks the Rebbe whether a chassid, Chabad chassid, can, is allowed to trim their mustache. And the Rebbe says, ask el elder chassidim of the past generation. Because the, 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 the mustache is not the beard. So even... Not, not even talking halachically, even according to Zohar and Kabbalah, you're allowed to. Now he wanted to know whether that's the way Chabad. So the Rebbe said that you have to ask Chabadniks how they did it a hundred years ago. And what I've seen is like this and like that. Some very fine Hasidim do trim their much there, some don't. My son, I think, trims his mustache. You know. I don't. So, am, am I not allowed to have an untrimmed mustache because he might be for, he might feel my father? No, I mean, you know, so it's, I, I think that's an absurdity. But this fellow, for whatever reason, you know, he he he, he feels, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not again not saying right wrong. I just was making a point that um, the nefesh abamis. Is, is a master player, and he has so many ways that he can deceive us. You want to say something else, Hillel? Yeah, just another quick, charming story. Yeah. I was once sitting with the Strepka Barebi Shlita of Yerushalayim, okay. and he told me, he said, when he was young, his father told him he had to make sure his mustache was well trimmed. And he said, why? And, and he, he said, the reason is... Because if you had milk cooks for breakfast and then you have flashix for lunch and shit, and you put your hair, it gets in your mouth, maybe you're mixing milk, milk, milk and meat. Okay, let's go on. He says in the Oz Pealim Hazaza Banefesh Abamis. Here too, this word is very precise. After we praise Hashem in our throat through praises. Of God, as we say in the Pesukim of Zimra, we make an impact. Hazaza, the word Hazaza means lahaziz to move, movement. We shake and bake that nefesh abamis. In Yiddish, the word is tresel. Megit a tresel, or the more commonly word that Avi you probably heard is a shuckle, shuckle like shuckling, right? So hazaza means a shuckle. We give a shake, a shuckle, a, this nefesh abamis, that it, you know, like I told you, what does the Zohar say? Zohar says that a chicken that has on a shmutz, you can try to get all the shmutz off between its wings and it'll never get e each drop of dirt off unless it shakes itself. So w this realization that God is the master and creator of the world vis-a-vis -vis the universe and everything that's in the world makes an impact on the nefesh abamis that the nefesh abamis shakes itself it shuckles itself lahafrid bin hara to separate itself from the bad lisho al kolponim the Rebbe is very real in realizing, like I told you, let's say this morning you had a good davening, 
and you were able to knock that nefesh abamis out of your system and say, wake up, guy, and let's go serve God somehow. Let's be a good boy. The next morning, you're ready, he's back at it. Forget about the next morning. Mincha time. Right? I remember yeshiva, I asked myself, why do we have to daven three times a day? I know it says in Shulchan Aruch, but what's the idea? I just daven shachris. And sometimes you have a good shachris, Avram. You got to daven mincha again. The answer is because in between shachris and mincha, you went and ate breakfast. Ask yourself, how did you eat breakfast? Did you eat breakfast like a yid? Or did you eat breakfast like a glutton? But you just haven't. You just contained the nefesh abamis. But he is a player. He ain't sleeping. And then every opportunity, he's back at it. So when I went over to the mashpir of Melech Tzvipel of Ashalom and asked him this question, I said that when I eat breakfast, I don't feel, one second, I don't feel the feelings that I had during Shachris, which were more elated and more holy. So what's the point of davening? So he said to me, think about it this way. Could you imagine how you would eat breakfast if you hadn't davened? You would eat breakfast in a much worse way. You understand? You knew Rabbi Tzibo. You like his answer to me? So you're complaining that you're not eating with the greatest kavana breakfast. Imagine how you would be without davening. The same is true for mincha. Why do we need mincha? Because as we eat breakfast and as we go out to work, those feelings of holiness and refinement that we created during chakras have been lessened and are getting less and less and less. Hashem says, start davening mincha. And mincha again, once again, connects you to something more spiritual and holy. And as the afternoon goes on and you start dwindling there, daven mayrif. And as mayrif finishes, do krishma shalamita that we spoke about earlier. So in other words, the full gamut of the 24 hours is really a, a day in which Hashem, through the Chazal, give us four times, Shachar, Smincha, Mayrif, Krishna, Shalamita, to keep us straight. And why? Because the Nefesh is enjoys more the world than the Ruchnius. So yeah, while you have it during the davening, you could seize it and, and bring it into your domain. That's why the Rebbe says here, I'm explaining this because the Rebbe says the words here, Lisha al kol ponim. At least temporarily, for a while, I succeed in separating the nefesh abamis from the shtus, from the bed. And that's why a person should never trust himself. I don't care how old you are and how smart you are and how learned you are, you have to be on guard. Simply speaking. Yes, Hila. Nothing? Okay. Venasa boy is. Okay. Venasa boy is in a TL During that time, Moshe, when we are Davidi, and we brought the Nefesh Abamis along for the ride, and it says, I won't be a bad guy, I will use my passion for Hashem, we create in the Nefesh Abamis netia, meaning an inclination to good. What does that mean? It says the Rebbe, a beautiful last line in this paragraph. Hainu ha'anocha klolis, the general attitude the elokus hu taif. Godliness is good. This line here is so profound. This idea that we that that we have the ability during davening to create one thing by the nefesh abamis. Godliness is a good thing. I know you don't know much about godliness. 
But don't look at godliness as a bad thing. You see, most times, the reason we are attracted or, or against something is because in our mind, we think of it as good or bad. So the Rebbe says the first thing you have to do is we have to create by the Nefesh Abbamis the attitude that godliness is a good thing. Like I told you yesterday, that the Afabrengen is a good thing. Why? Because it's a good thing. You get some drinks, you get some talking, you get some camaraderie. Elekusu Dover the nefesh abamis has to come to that. And if, if you can't, and if you don't create that, you can't begin the therapy. The therapy only begins when you're willing to listen to a therapist. It will, will therapy succeed if you go into the office saying, "I know better than you"? <laughs> no. The therapist is, is say, "I don't want to see you again." You know, go somewhere. I'm not here to fight with you. If you're open. And to to being healed through therapy, let's talk. The nefesh abamis has to be opened, open to the fact that godliness is a good thing. Says the Rebbe, when you daven every day and you say these psukim and you Lord Hashem and and you talk about all the things that we we speak about in psukim de zimra, we create an attitude by the nefesh abamis that it says hano. Alokus hu tov. Okay? It's a good place. It's a good place. The same is true for our home. What's most important for the youth, children, grandchildren, and, and the youth, they should feel they can come home. If they don't feel they can come home, we have a big problem. Because the, the, the details only come later. But before you get into details, they have to feel, this is my home. I could be there the way I am, and I'm accepted on a certain level. Then you can negotiate. <laughs> Wear a yarmulke, don't wear a camera. Smoke a shoppers, don't smoke, you shouldn't smoke at all. But you know what I'm saying, use your cell phone, not yourself. Be in your room, not be in your room. Those are all already details. Important ones, but the first thing is, get them home. What did the Rebbe say with the Seder? Our Bani, their four sons, comes along to the Baba Chirebba Avi in the 1950s and introduces a unique concept that is that set the tone. There's a fifth son, and everyone's screaming, Rebbe, what are you, uh, an innovator? What are you, uh, making a new Judaism? Rebbe says, no. The fifth son is not in the Haggadah, not in the Pesach, say, during the Haggadah, because he doesn't even know it's Pesach, or he doesn't care about Pesach, so he doesn't come to the Seder, so he's not, so he's not included as one of the sons. Even the Shani De Elisho, he don't know what to ask, he's like, uh, oh, but he's there. There's someone on the street who's not interested or anti or doesn't know. You got to bring him into the Seder. He's the fifth son. The Rebbe says here in the Mimer, the first thing you have to create by the Nefesh Abamis is that godliness is good. If godliness is good, let's talk. And this is a very important Nakuda. Very important Nakuda. You know, people will come to counseling and say, I don't want to hear about religion. I want them to be normal and stable. That's the first thing. If you're not normal and stable, if there's an issue, you know, and what religion? What, what, what religion? It, it, it lasts a day, two, a week, two, or three. You have to be grounded and stable and and feel good, and, and all that, then religion becomes very important. And all of this is out of these few words in a mimer. How, that the Nefesh is the same thing. It's a, it's a wild beast pulling at us every moment. There isn't a moment that it gives up. So we say to it, Hey Nefesh 
this davening arena every day in the morning, Shachris, is a place where you'll feel warm. Avram said it's cold over there right now. You'll feel heat. In other words, when you come into a shul, you know the feeling you should have when you come into your shul? I love being here. It's Gishmak. I'm sitting in shul. I, I like to go to the shul. This I've told you about many times. And it's like, it's not, I have 20 shuls next to my house. And I drive all the way, whatever, all the way. Like five minutes away. Why? Because I just have, I just love being in that shul. I don't know, whatever. You know, you have to have that, that's the beginning. You have to, you come to a shear. I mean, I think we could say, Baruch Hashem, we're already four or five years on the shear. We have a good feeling be t- being together. Whether we understand more, we understand less, we create a bond that's the beginning, and then you can go further. And I, and I had this with my Rebbe's, with Rabbi Yochum and Mashpia, just being in the room with him, whether I understood or I didn't understand, whether I heard or I didn't hear, whether I fell asleep or I didn't, I felt good. I'm in a healthy place. The davening is a healthy place. And this is what the Rebbe is getting at. And that's the Aved of Psuki de Zimra. To create a healthy place, knowing that Hashem is the creator of the mountains and the seas and, 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 and the earth and all of nature. It's a good place. It's a very nice place. The Rebbe said, Yudshvat is coming up, the yard site, and the, the day when the Rebbe became Rebbe, 1971 or 72, it's already online. The Rebbe spoke for 45 minutes, a long talk. How the world is a garden, Bossi Ligani. It's a garden with roses. Yeah, you gotta pluck out the, the 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 bad parts of the garden. But this world, it's a great place. It's an opportunity. It's not a place that's cold, decrepit, um, bad, trouble. Yeah, if you look at the world that way, you're a very morbid, bitter person. And, and, you, and you have to see the opportunities. Even in the, in the hardships, the opportunities. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Shalom. Bye. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah.